the map Catalina. This is marked not by a cat, by an octopus. Hmm. Which it's probably could not be thrown in this spiral due to conservation of momentum as it extended its tentacles. But down here on the bottom right-hand side of the map, we have our light blue Terran player. He is from Team Root, and he has never kicked cats. It is... And I assume we don't have a name title. It's Root Massa. And his opponent for this best of five is going to be spawning up in the or in the left pos hand position, nine o'clock spawn. Going for a pretty standard double gas. It is the blue Protoss from Team Pipside Gaming. It is Puck, the notorious cat kicker. Exactly. He was well. He's being nice. He his cat loved him so much that he had to go take care of him first. Yeah. It's the, the beauty of a puck to cat cat relationship. <laughs> He's a pet lover. And yeah, of course, the standard things going on there. He's got two uh, probes mining from each uh, assimilator here, um, mm -hmm. which gives you pretty much a lot of options at this point. The tech could end up going in a number of ways. Uh, puck is, however, uh, putting a proxy pylon down here behind where Master's base is. So does tend to be a little indication that it will be a Stargate. Yeah, Massa's Mass is gonna find out though with his Reapers, which yeah. by the way, he's going double Barrett Reaper. Yeah. Uh, so we were right so with Catalina being the Mass Reapers. Yeah, uh, yeah. Massa, in addition to the damage he'll get done with his Reapers, and there almost certainly will be some because he's committing pretty heavily to them, uh, is gonna scout the count the pylons and see that there's one missing and there's gonna be a uh, Stargate being proxied out on the map. So quite a few kills already with just this one Reaper. This is much more than a, just a single first Reaper should be able to get done. Yeah, he's got the two kills. The use of the STV there is kind of clever. You know that yeah. when you uh, come in with a Reaper, they're gonna, if you get too close, they're gonna try and just grab you and surround you. By having the STV there attacking, some of his probes might try and grab the STV instead. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened, so. Uh, coming back in, we'll finish another one off. Uh, gets Whoa. caught by that wall and loses one. Yeah, a bit unfortunate there. Uh, nice Sim City by yeah. by Puck, but the and third Reaper comes in and picks off a probe of its own. So there's quite a few probes gone down. Six probes so far, which is yeah. really crippling this early in the game. But yeah. the Oracle's we'll see on how its way. This Oracle does. Yeah, yeah. Well, the now, there is a turret. The there's a turret yeah. coming up. Uh, yeah, about five seconds. He'll get there oh, yeah, slightly it'll be, it'll be done. just as it finishes, yeah. <laughs> Only just He sees though. it though right away. Yeah, very, very close there. Uh, but luckily for Matt, he knows his timings. He's got it bang on yeah. and he's still got, uh, is it three Reapers? Yeah, three Reapers yes. out of the map. So he's going to be two shotting probes, which is uh, pretty scary. Yeah. And wow, of course, no it's going to be yeah. impossible for the Protoss to expand at this time. <laughs> Because there's no way yeah. to defend anything that's being built. Um, right now, a second Oracle has come out for Puck. It does, of course, still have the first one alive. With uh, Yeah, and a third one coming. That's uh, uh, quite the commitment. Yeah, definitely. It's going to uh, delay this natural expansion from Massa for a long time, though. Taking out another SCB that's building it. And with two or three Oracles, it's going to be basically impossible for... Uh, master to get up that natural until he has enough marines to push out and defend it. Yeah, and he's working on combat shields now to try and extend the life of the marines a tiny bit. Uh, yep. Third Oracle is out, making a fair bit of a formidable force. We've now got a stalker and the mothership core. One reaper does die, just the single one remaining, but they've certainly put in work. Yeah, absolutely. Nine probes total uh, for the cost of four Reapers. I think that's that's a pretty decent price. It's not like uh, just game over damage, game completely yeah. game ending damage, but it's I, I think it's about what Master wants to get done. Maybe a little bit more. Yeah, they're both actually at exactly <laughs> 23 workers. Um, of course, when you add the mule into that, usually the Protoss is supposed to be one or two ahead. Yeah, Chronoboost and but, that. Uh, yeah, four Oracles now yeah. coming in going after this reactor and we'll just take it out and that's a bit of an expensive loss in the time killer yeah uh, it'd be kind of cool to see him focus down uh, that tech lab and get 
combat shields, oh. but I think Supply he's Supply Depot gets repaired here. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I could have finished it off with like one more little volley, but he went for the Marine. Still consumes resources to repair that back up, so. Yeah, Still yeah. obnoxious. Not many, but uh, every yeah. other helps, and... I mean, these pack of four oracles are still alive, still roaming around, terrorizing. Uh, I think face. there. I mean, there obviously is a point at which he just dive bombs this missile turret. Um, yeah, I think I have to agree. Yeah, I'm almost surprised one of these hasn't been a void ray to kind of tank for that. Yeah, and just and just right. burn it down with the uh, the armor. Whoa! Oh, doesn't want to lose that one for sure. Yeah, especially when you kind of lose a little bit of health on all these oracles. Uh, if they're focused down correctly by the missile turret, then they're going to die very, very quickly. I don't even think five of them can take down the missile turret, especially not if it's being repaired. But six oracles is going to kill just about anything very, very quickly. So he can run in and snipe stim, no problem at all. Yeah, for sure could do that. He's now up to the six. Um... He's he can find if he catches this whole army out too, that may just straight up die to this. Um, we've got only a handful, not a handful, but it's only so many He's marines gonna... here. Yeah, he does just peel them down. <laughs> Three he just left. kills all the marines. Oh my god! So that's I, I'm... kind of interesting. I I mean, it leaves it, obviously it leaves masses such that he can't do anything about this yet, but as a Widow Mine comes out, that'll change the equation by a whole lot. Uh, oh, but okay. he loses it right away. He's yeah, got the awesome. Starport actually producing, I expected at least one of these to be a Viking, but he's making a uh, double medevac. Yeah, I think a Viking... Because a single be a Viking pretty... kind of just controls the space. Yeah, absolutely, against all the Oracles. Yeah. Uh, oracles obviously can't attack Vikings, so they do pretty nicely, and... Uh, Mass sorry, Park is doing so well with his oracles, just keeping them always active, never rallying them over the Terran base and just always keeping them around and threatening this natural. Yeah, behind this, finished now. Yeah, behind this, uh, Puck is actually, he's getting up a pretty standard game. He's getting his, oh, picking up the uh, SCB to save it from the oracles. Uh, yeah, he's getting pretty standard game, getting his uh, Colossus tech up, single forge searching up, well, not currently searching upgrades. But just everything looks really normal, which if I was in Master's shoes right now, I'd be kind of surprised by that. Usually when we see big yeah. uh, commitments to the Stargate from Protoss, rather than just like four oracles is the most you build with a standard build behind it, I feel. Uh, whereas like six plus, I feel like is a preparation for an all-in the whole time. And yeah, exactly. Just, you feel like you need to break this, yeah. but he's just like, oh, I'm just doing the old standard eight Oracle Colossus. Yeah, exactly. Like it's it's <laughs> it's not a thing, but it it is right now. And he's ahead by eleven workers. It's like so, it's like Puck is playing Phoenix Colossus, yeah. but he's Miss Hotkeyed his uh, yeah. make Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> to uh, to E instead of X or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, but, whoa! Oh. That, Nice. That's the old hidden one. This is kind of the classic location now. Just yeah. behind the sensor tower of that orbital command, you can put a widow mine there, and unless they rotate their camera, virtually impossible to see that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, I go so far as to say it is impossible to see that. Like yeah, normally, you'd be able to tell with, like, say, a changeling or something because of the health yeah. bar. But when the widow mine's borrowed, there's there's no health bar. Yeah, there doesn't. Cool. But. A bit of a premature stim there by Master, but I guess he gets there a bit faster, wants to scout it out a little bit. But back at Puck's place, he should do pretty all right with holding this. There's a Colossus out and a ton of super high energy sentries. These set sentries haven't had to do anything. There's no need to send in hallucinations when you've got the oracles flying around the base. There's no need to do the force yeah. fields when all his units are at home defending against your oracles. Uh, so three full energy sentries is a butt ton of force fields. And this huge revelation on everything. Um, yeah. You know, you can't pick up. There's no drop play to this at all now. Tagged yeah. everything. Yeah, those oracles have been putting in absolute work for NASA. Pretty scary. It's a yes, scary it, concept. I'm very glad people It definitely do this. is. He's uh, going after another. Okay, there goes another uh, Widow Mine on the very damaged one. 
but they've definitely uh, done their job many times over at this point. Uh, yeah, some absolutely. Vikings are starting to come out now, which of course is necessary to deal with Colossus. But I feel like he might be a little, um, you know, late on the draw on some of that because I don't think he really knew that, like you said, everything was just normal behind yeah. this. Uh, I mean, he had to realize that at some point when the oracles just killed all his marines <laughs> yeah. and there weren't a bunch of zealots and stalkers that ran into the base and just started dancing around. But I don't know. It's, I, I mean, it's so jarring to me that Puck is just playing. He's taking a third base after crazy oracle aggression uh, and bringing up a second forge as well. I, I love it, actually. Yeah. This is exactly the sort of thing I really like. Like, uh, slight aggression with a couple units with just big macro plays behind it. It's really cool. Yeah, definitely. Get, get leaned on the one kind of advantage that he had. Like, he had to go so deep to get such essentially a small edge, in a sense. Um, yeah. But to make up for the fact that... Because he started off, like, in the first few minutes, he was behind to the Reapers. Then yeah. had to lean so hard on these oracles to get back to a head, and now he's quite a bit ahead, um, worker count wise. Fourteen ahead. He's got the third base almost up and running now. So there's yeah. only going to be a, a bit of a window here for Massa to go in and get something done. And every time he tries to move up, be sneaky, he's going to get tagged by this revelation. Yeah, the two oracles still alive, uh, still. You know, searching around for that army. And um, Puck actually has a bunch of proxy pylons out on the map. So as soon as Mass starts moving in, Puck can uh, try and do some more than home. Big Doom Drop, though, coming into uh, Puck's main base. And the Photon Nova just comes down, and Puck's going to have to try and move up to deal with this. He will be able to take it out. Though, actually, the Vikings get a nice position on the Colossi, and two of them are going to go down pretty immediately. Uh, I think the third one's going to follow, and Massa is going to trade out really, really nicely. He's yeah. losing all of his Vikings, taking out every single Colossus. One at the front is going to fall to uh, run by as well. And for the cost of only a few units at the front and about one medevac worth of units, really nice play there, completely resetting the AoE for Puck. Yeah, definitely does uh, do that well. We don't mind going off up front here. He's got all these zealots who are way in the back. Nice force fields here, though. They're the pickup into his zealots in the back. Uh, but he will still stabilize here and just go after this third base. Yeah. Yeah, that third base is gone, I reckon. Yeah. Uh, even this same game with just a relatively small handful of fire, that's too oh, much. Oh, he does to get chased away here. here. Is he going to be able to hold this off? Huh? He's got two little forces here. The second force did hold the zealots off from performing a full flank. <laughs> uh, but that uh, Dexus is still alive. He's. I'm sure it'll be dead in about. 30 seconds, but... Yeah, Massa actually is going to try and is keep Puck up no, in that third base while he goes for the natural next. Okay. The probes going off the line are going to die in droves. And Puck's going to try and come up from the other side and save it. A lot of these units are on very, very low health. Too low to stim even. So the Zelts are going to do great work on it. And Archon gets morphed in after a high, couple of high Templars, but that one's going to go down as well. Can't get slowed by those Marauder Concussor shells, actually, so it's going to get away. Yeah, reinforcements still coming across for Massa. They everything is so low, but there's not enough here to close it out. Probes are being pulled off this line, but with zealot support this time, he's going to pull them back into the widow mines, which have now reactivated, and that will cause a lot of damage. Yeah, but uh, the probes are pulled, sure. And yeah. There's barely any gateway. There's two zealots and two stalkers yeah. to deal with this. So 19 probes now for Massa yeah. for Puck even, and GG. Massa pulled that pack with incredible fun. Hello, hello. Here we are on our second map of the evening. We are here on Deadwing. And the players have spawned in the vertical locations, which does make a fair bit of difference on this one. Uh, up mm -hmm. in the top right-hand corner of the map, we have now in the darker blue, it is our root player. He is the one true Maru. It is Masa.
And his opponent is down the bottom right hand corner. This time playing as the red and playing as Protoss. Representing his new team, Flipside Gaming. It is Puck. Okay. And he's doing the same sort of uh, SimCity thing here that really a lot of people should pick up. Um, in just making these little blocks behind your mineral line mm. can really mess around with the pathing of the Reapers. And we saw yeah. in the previous game where one of them died because of that pathing glitch that it may not have even looked like it was blocked off, so he didn't know it was, but you go to make that move and all of a sudden it doubles back, back into the fire or something else. So uh, it, it can definitely save you a lot of aggregation and uh, make sure that it dies. Yeah, I mean, one of the uh, annoying things to deal with with Reapers for a long time as Protoss was just having them run around the back of your mineral line and just basically yeah. round around your nexus as your mothership core was too slow to chase them down. But blocking off the back half means that they have to run through uh, through your mineral line if they want to run around exactly. your nexus. And then that makes it a lot easier to surround them with your probes and uh, just slow them down that little bit getting that tiny bit of extra damage off that is so crucial to pick them off. So, yeah, it's it's always worth doing a reef wall, pretty much. That's how you wall against town. You don't wall at the top of your ramp. Yeah, exactly. Um, we had, I don't know what, that, what was that he started and then cancelled, but Massa cancelled something in the back of his uh, mineral line there, but anyway, switched it into a supply depot. Going for a factory, he is building the CC on the low ground. And there comes the Reaper hopping in and out. He uses the magical Reaper stairs. Yep, and uh, the Reaper did see the Stargate, of course, as well. Uh, has Puck, Puck scouted? No, actually, Puck hasn't scouted at all, so he doesn't know where his opponent is, slightly, even slightly, but uh, actually, that might be a lie. I think he sent he a scout the watchtower and saw yeah. something coming, saw yeah. the Reaper coming from the north, maybe. Uh, that would make sense as to where, why it's Stargate's position, where it is, and why it's just rallied straight out there. But um, the Reef comes in again, uh, it's going to get out as well. And obviously it's seen the Stargate, confirmed it wasn't cancelled or anything, or no mind games were tried to play play Puck. Uh, so he knows there's Oracles on the way again, but how many this time? Yeah, that's definitely the question. When can I stop making these Marines <laughs> is a big part of it. Because, of course, at this point, you uh, very often would have the Terran player. He wants to switch the reactor to the factory or a starport when it's done. But you don't really mm -hmm. want it on this uh, barracks if you don't have to. No, at least two Oracles going to be coming out. But Massa, once again, he's using the uh, shape of this fa of this barracks to hide a widow mine. So it's very, very possible that yeah. the Oracle could fly over this and not know until he hears that zip sound that actually the Oracle's dead. Yeah, it's the too late sound. And he will yep. make a beeline for it. No, uh, he turns away at the last second. I don't know if he saw it or just figured. That mineral know, line is guarded. He may find it very suspicious that the mineral line is not guarded at all. Yeah. Like that Maybe. could be a tip off. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he saw it. Oh, either that or he came in camera tilted, knowing that that is a common thing. Yeah, well, last game uh, he was caught out by that, so that's the yep. sort of thing that you'd adapt to. It's uh, not many Terrans actually use that. I've seen it only like two or three times. I think it's a fantastic trick. I don't know why yeah. everybody isn't that uh, they're going to be doing four Widow Mines, which Terrans so commonly do nowadays. And um, yeah, I guess uh, Puck could well have just adapted a little camera tilt into his play. Massa is going for a Widow Mine drop. So that's going to be coming in towards the natural base, but uh, we see Puck with uh, two sentries, two stalkers, and the oracle in his natural. So I really don't imagine this Widowman's going to get any damage done at all. No, he'll see it now with uh, this pylon. Yeah, yeah, I don't even well. think it'll get to the ground. Uh, no. Yeah. Oh, one, oh! one does get in. Oh, wow. That ah. one was certainly worth it. That one was certainly worth it. It got actually three kills, so. I think two probes on top of that. Yeah, two probes in an oracle, which is okay. Yeah, uh, that one's a pretty good one, especially when that was your detection. And the but now a uh, observer <laughs> will come over and at least hopefully he'll move something back. Yeah, there we go. Only yeah, one shot required before it resets. <laughs> Yeah, that would be even worse. But uh, we also, at the same time, uh, Massa has a drop 
coming in towards the north side of Puck's base. Uh, it's going to back off, actually, just as soon as it sees that Stargate. And that is actually a bit of interesting information as well. Seeing that Stargate warping in more oracles more. Yeah. Uh, is... I mean, that's going to make Master feel a little bit like, oh, God, not this again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit, a bit strange. There's still the one empty medevac actually just parked down on the bottom of the map, but uh, obviously nothing doing with that. Two oracles are making a line for the base. Is the widow mine going to go back to hidden position? It is behind this uh, refinery. Is it? I this see one it you can refinery? see it. Yeah, you can is. see it a tiny bit, but it, it's still very hard to see. Yeah, it depends where you're looking at it from. Uh, it's difficult to see. It actually looks there. like Puck's going to get caught out. Pow! And uh, that damages the other one. Still alive though. Look at that. Kill a few SCVs with it, but. I mean, with no shields, he can't really. Uh, yeah. well, he doesn't really want to be dancing around the Marines or picking any of more of them off. He could actually. He could vision uh, up and uh, kill the Widowmine. Or he could have. Yeah. Can't now. Could have. Yeah. Oh well. Damien and Vision is off his. That was interesting well. that he just kind of stopped chasing them with the Marines, and he got three more kills. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think his like attention that. turned to a little drop or something here at the third. Um. Yeah, both players looking towards third bases now, and uh, it's a really interesting choice of third base by Puck as well, because typically we'll see the yeah. one on the high ground, because it's a lot easier to defend. You get that high ground advantage, you can stay around just on the high ground, being nice and safe, um, defending your natural and your third at the same time until the rocks are broken down. And... Uh, in addition to that, the third base Puck has chosen is closer to Massa, which is generally right. an advantage for Terran. Short rush distances, distances and unless you go to the extreme and like it's just Zerg like, 6 pulling everybody while they spawn in their base. Uh, shorter rush distances tend to advantage Terran a bit. So we could see, I mean, we could see this working out pretty well for Massa. He's going to scan that third base location and see it. And he's probably just going to try and push in and take it. I'm not sure if he'll be able to with the Colossus there, though. Yeah, there's not too many zealots guarding it. He could just snipe the glasses, and that's exactly what he's doing. Oh, he's gonna. Yeah. Yeah, the force wheels are not uh, enough to save that. Yeah. But, and now with the zealots down, he can just pound through the rest of this, really. Uh, Oracle does fall. He's got little left, but this is not like game ending or anything, but it does certainly do a lot of damage going after workers. Yeah, both the Fortune Overtures had to go down, but uh, they will save the day in the end. The Mothership Core falls, but it was on lower energy, so actually, that's going to mean Puck gets more energy a little faster. Yeah. Sure, the resources are tied a bit, but uh, the energy's Oh, cool, this Widowmine. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ten kills. Ten oh, God. kills on that Widowmine. Damn, that is, that is he one. He kind of did that in the midst of all this fighting. He brought in that uh, medevac that was kind of chilling out in the back. And drop that one yeah. line. Yeah, looks like we've got some more drops coming in as well. There's a couple cannons here for Puck, so they're just going to delay Massa for long enough, really, for these uh, units to actually bring in and clean up. But, oh no, the Widowmind is going to take out the Observers there. Uh, so, yeah, not the best drop there by Massa, but uh, he's he certainly has a good one. And it does draw the units out of position for him to run in towards the third base. And uh, a few more pros being picked off there. And whoa, circling around on well, the Medax falls, but still really good damage, keeping Puck's uh, Puck's probe count a bit low, keeping him nicely suppressed. Master actually had a, has a worker lead right now, which is not really supposed to happen in TVP. Yeah. Generally, the protest is a little ahead on workers just because they have Chrono Boost, so they can produce them faster. And Terran has mules, so they generally get by with a little bit of a lower uh, yeah uh, the work count. Yeah, it's uh, in the army supply, obviously 30 in favor of Massa at this point. He's just going to continue pounding through with this bio army and with no AOE. Uh, we'll still do some damage. Yeah, we'll still do quite a lot. In fact, with no gas on the third base, uh, it's going to be a while until Templar are really out on the field in force, at least, and at least unless uh, Puck starts to skip Colossi a lot. And the gateway, as we can see here, is just not enough against this uh, bio by Massa. Just Tight back, the Colossus does come out, and that's going to help out a lot. But when the gateway tanking falls, the 
Uh, the Marauders get right on top of that Colossus and they'll take it out as soon as they can. Yeah, more Zealots coming in, trying to shove everything back. The Archon will end up falling here, uh, but as more get worked in. Uh, upgrade advantage is definitely for uh, our Protoss player right now. It's oh, yeah. plus one armor, but that's what's been keeping him alive, but he still loses the Colossus. If the Zealots were not plus two armor, then uh, they would have just melted, obviously, that much quicker. Yeah, absolutely. Puck's uh, upgrade is actually really, really good. He's got three, two, uh, plus three armor and plus two weapons on the way as well. Um, the double upgrades is one of the reasons why his army is as small as it is compared to Massa, who's being able to really, really bully him here. Another Colossus coming out is going to help out a lot, but big Widowman here and all those devs are going to soften up the vibe pretty nicely. Another one just on the ones that are falling away. And uh, Massa with all this meta back down so here. well. Wow. Yeah, just fighting away and. Uh, Every time Puck retreats, there's another one or two units to get picked off by the uh, Concussive Shell. But plus two attack finish now for Puck, so the Colossus is going to be doing a lot more damage. The Zealots are doing a little bit more as well, plus two or plus three armor as well, about finish. Yeah, but it looks I like the Nexus, yeah, Nexus is just going to go down. Mass with so many Marauders can just just blast it down with absolutely no problem. Ah, the Colossus! Take the Colossus. The second one comes out, but. First one dies, high ground vision. Will he finish it? Not quite. Oh, not quite. But a drop, drop up. Top of Take off. Massa with GG takes game two as well. All right, everybody, and welcome. Welcome back to this show match, Puck vs. Massa. And uh, this actually could be the last game because uh, the score is currently 2-0 in favor of this uh, blue Terran spawn down the bottom of Vanny Reset Station. Uh, so he's hoping this is our final game because if it is, yeah. he has won the show match and claimed his victory. He's representing Root Gaming and his name is Massa. And his opponent, up at the top, middle-ish side of the screen. It is a red Protoss player. He is representing a flip side gaming. It is Puck. And I'll take my hat off for 30 seconds while no one can see me on camera. And oh, I'll put oh, it back on. oh, you're not doing it. I can see you on camera. Damn it. No, I'm not turning. There we go. Oh. oh, Roy Tech, you'll be jealous. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, on to, uh, on to other non-hat related things. Yeah. And this time Puck is actually going for just a single gas. So, yeah. a bit, already, yeah, a departure from the style he's used in the other games, so where he's gone double gas pretty heavily into it, fairly quickly putting on that extra third probe into each and just going for mad oracles. This time just a single gas style, a bit more conservative. And I think Vanny Research Station is a good map for that. With that in-base natural, you can definitely be a bit more economic. It's a lot more defensible. It's quite a long map as well, so the rush distance is fairly long. Yeah, it's a little deceptive. It looks kind of small, but the way you have to go around like this bow or something almost, it's a bit longer than it looks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, like you said, you're not attacking the natural, you're attacking the main. Uh, so your defense of that is a fair bit easier. And we got uh, the probe hunting around, trying to kill time until he makes a nexus. He's like trying to hide from the SCV that's trying to stop him. <laughs> yeah, the SCV could actually throw down a. Oh. Oh, that's not good. Actually, yeah. Puck gets the nexus sound, so that's pretty nice to him. And yeah, Mass is just going to have to saunter on out of there. There's a Reaper coming in as well, but Reapers are probably out of like Dead Ring Vanny and Catalina. I would say yeah. Vanny is the worst map for Reapers out of these three. Yeah, for sure. For sure it is. For one, that you can't even get in to the natural without completely committing yourself. There's only yeah. one place to hop up. So it doesn't give you any information on that. 
Um, yeah, and that you can't really run into the natural without going through the main. So you know yeah. where the Reaper's exactly. going to come through, and it's basically where Puck's position his stalker. Uh, yeah. That or just straight up the ramp. And if you're going straight up the ramp, what's the point, point in even being a Reaper? Exactly. Nobody gave you a jetpack so you could climb stairs. I oh, know, don't walk. Hop. <laughs> yeah, predictability is definitely death to a Reaper. And, uh, of course, you've got the Stalker trying to prove that point by uh, them patrolling and standing in the spots. And uh, this is clear that this is a one-way trip. But he wanted to get a sense of what's going on. And, of course, Puck knows that, and he saved his tech path until after the Reaper was going to die. Because he knew the Reaper yeah. was coming back. <laughs> yeah, I came back and didn't really see anything. Sacrificed his life and yeah. for a little gain. But I don't know. Mass is going to move out and just take the uh, take the watchtower. So he's going to he should have a decent idea of things that are coming his way. The interesting thing about the placement, uh, the watchtower placement on this map, is it doesn't really show you anything about the main pardon me, ground attack routes. Right. Uh, it just shows you drops and oh, I guess oracles. So I think Mass is still a little bit worried that Puck might be hiding at Stargate somewhere and hiding some plants to go oracles, but. That's absolutely not the case. We see the robotic facility coming out, and it just looks... It all looks really, really standard out of park, actually. Yeah, he's just kind of cutting that off entirely and going straight into this robo, and, uh -huh. yeah, Massa is positioning his stuff just in case that is uh, that is true, that he's got Marines in both mineral lines, um, not being aggressive or anything himself. And, yeah, Puck's just going to do this... Kind of straight up, normal robotics bay coming down. Just go Colossus. Yeah, yeah so his uh, his Colossi are going to be a lot faster than either of the other two games. Both games he committed a lot of gas into Oracles rather than tech, whereas this game, the, like, the like army compositional tech has been straight up. And that's, of course, his Colossi, because it's going to be part of his army composition. Probably... We'll see a general sort of Stalker Colossus mid-game transitioning into some uh, more Zealot High Templar sort of business going on later on <clears throat> most likely yeah. about when he takes his third we'll see a transition to high, towards high templar because that's when you can afford it with the gas but for now i like the warp prism being mixed in as well because he's taking control of the watchtower uh the drop path will be much much clearer he can go in towards the natural base for massa with a i guess that's the shortest by air rust distance from his natural yeah. to massa's natural and just uh, start warping in zealots and annoying massa yeah, and he just needs to delay him a little bit. If Massa pulls out and goes for any sort of attack, just four zealots coming in will force a pretty sizable chunk of the army back. Uh, that's going to let him finish up the third lance, a couple of classes, maybe even. Ch uh, we'll see if he goes to charge or yeah, blank is first. I think charge even might have made sense here, but obviously blank is more standard to do. Oh, is Puck just trapped a probe? Puck just trapped a probe! Oh, this makes me feel so good, because I was playing Protoss earlier and I trapped so <laughs> many probes. It's nice to know that even like one of the yeah, top exactly. North American <laughs> Protosses just, uh, just does that sometimes. It's always the case, and particularly on the newer the map, the more likely you are to do this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, some of the new maps actually have some really weird sort of uh, hitboxing, pathing around their terrain. So things you wouldn't expect to be wall offs are, and things you yeah. wouldn't, things you would expect to be wall offs aren't. It's just a little bit odd. But uh, we also see, we see Master going for the double upgrades again, which I really like, but it's a bit greedy. I think with this, it's going to be d very, very difficult for him to put on, uh, put down a third base in the face of any kind of serious aggression by Master. Yeah. Because he just won't have the units, because double upgrades, it doesn't sound like a huge commitment, but actually, it, especially months. as yeah. you get later and the upgrades start to become more expensive, you're cutting out like three or four stalkers every upgrade just to just to get it down. And it really becomes quite and expensive. I'm getting a little worried that there's just basically no army. A lot of this army is in a warp prism, and there's no yeah, there's like there's like no zealots with like the home force. Um, yeah. Of course, Massa is out here not to go up into the main yet. He's out here to make sure that no third base goes down. But uh, still, since he's taking his own, if he just does that, although uh, his own yeah. got halted but by that one. Oh zone. wow, walking stalkers! This yeah. is a little bit unusual. You don't this is interesting. 
Yeah, yeah with uh, with the Zealot Harass, you usually just see Zealot. Oh, sorry, with Warpen Harass, you usually just see Zealot. Yeah. But I guess you can actually pick up the Stalks and get out, so that's why he did it. Interesting. Yeah, I think he saw just the few Marines, so he thought maybe this is enough to kill those, and then I have free reign. But I guess so. No. no. Pretty cool stuff, though. Although, actually, that warp didn't get taken out by these Wither Mines. It would be pretty nasty. See, so um, Colossus moving down. He's actually got these medevacs half full. We'll have to drop them back up. Three Colossus, though, even without much padding up front, only four Zealots, it's still pretty quick. But he will charge in here, goes after one Colossus. Nice force fields on the way out. One does fall here, but he's losing a lot of this army just to uh, sacrifice for those and only gets the one. Yeah, the other Colossus survives on Braille Health and without any uh, Vikings to sort of pick those off and actually not have to get on top of them to kill them. Uh, it's going to be very, very difficult to pick them off, and maybe you'll be able to get one or two, but running in your whole army just to, just to snipe a Colossus is going to mean you're taking a lot of damage from the other Colossi and from... Uh, what were we looking at there? Was there a hidden winner mine? Uh, and from just uh, just the rest of the army, running past their lights is always horrific because you just get sliced apart. And yeah, it was... Yeah, so... Died to the widow mine. There's this lone zealot on the left hand side that kept going in and being annoying to this third base, but he got mined to death. Yeah. Yeah. Drop. Uh, looks like a oh. bit of a doom drop here. There is a force already waiting for it, though. Uh, knows that this is coming in. Um, yeah, not, he will not just a big enough force, though. Yeah, no. Uh, the mother school gets on a folk note. Gets on a folk note. Charge, but it might the be down. completely on the opposite side of the map. Yeah, they are. It's gonna. It's not gonna take them that long to get up here, though, with the uh, uh, with the cliff parting. But then, before they can, uh, Massa does manage to snipe the base, and at the same time, he's running in towards the third. Uh, and uh, if those there's, units are there's marauding, nowhere to... then... okay, they're not. <laughs> I saw like five units running in the med on the yeah. mini map, and if they were all marauders, that was a dead third as well. But uh, I guess not. He saves Still, though, some of the saves some of this drop, but it's like trapped. Um, <laughs> completely try. I don't think there's any way out of that. He's gonna have to find somewhere to drop them and just lose the force at some point. Yeah, or I mean, just it's just sort of enough. staying there being threatening. Although, actually, with a high Templar on the field now, if Puck yep. notices, especially on that low health medevac, which has all the yeah, units just in, yeah. it's just like click, pajol. Uh, so that's gonna be cool. I'm trying to keep an eye he on that. He could dart yeah. in towards the main, hallucinate Phoenix, going to see where they are. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, he may. Oh, oh, yeah, he provokes them. He, th he thought it was real. But just as good as any, he'll get them down. Yeah, uh, a couple of units get out, but they're just going to die to all each other. So, uh, Zelt's on fantastic upgrades again 2 2, um, with plus 3 armor being started by Puck. Uh, whereas Massa is actually just sitting on 1 1, so huge upgrade advantage here for Puck. And that's good, really going to help out in. Zealots with an armor advantage uh, just. Are incredibly tanking Colossi with an attack advantage do so much damage because they gain plus two damage per attack per attack upgrade and they have two attacks each one of their laser beams gains two damage um, you're looking at like four extra damage on those Colossi just from one of the attack upgrades and two extra on the other one and in AoE as well that translates to a lot of yeah, more lot dead of units lot. yeah yeah Massa not quite keeping up he did get the uh, armory out now uh, which will allow him to continue up but just starting the plus two plus two. Uh, we got Vikings patrolling around the area for this mother's or uh, war prison, which they will find just as it was ready to come in. But uh, Pox Force looking pretty strong here. Like you said, better upgrades. This is just a much more expensive, well put together force. Yeah. And yeah, taking the risk to. Yeah. Uh to like, sacrifice your army a little bit to get those better upgrades. I mean, it left Puck a little bit weak earlier on. And that's one of the reasons why he didn't have enough army really to protect his uh, uh, natural when it got sniped by Massa, aside from just Massa came in and surprised him. But now, it's evened out. Puck has equivalent army supply to Massa, a little bit higher even. Um, and it's better upgraded, and he's just got a fantastic composition for it. So it's going to be really, really tough here for Massa to hold. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, sets off some of the Widow Vines, or at least one of them there. Yeah. 
Yeah, and he can just. And keep he's on got time. Yeah, I mean, he's got yeah. time. Like about a full minute, a little more than a full minute before two two is done, so he can come in and take these pokes, make sure the situation is optimal. Yeah, he's just waiting for his three three until he attacks yeah. it, and exactly. three three against one one is. Yeah. No. Just going to be a complete yeah. stomp. He's actually he sees the opportunity. Yeah. Plus three armor's done. He's just gonna bait a couple of these wooden mines. Uh he's still got like fifteen seconds, ten seconds before plus three. And I reckon we're gonna see it and pretty much an immediate. He'll go in with the yeah, uh, with these archons, yeah. he'll come in. Here we go, plus three's done. Puck setting up the engagement. A winner mine bakes out, or a zealot bakes out a couple of mines, and all the zealots come in. Fantastic stuff there here, and the Colossi are tearing for everything. Oh, no the Vikings are remain just in gone. the sky. Yeah. And oh my god, everything is just being slaughtered for Massa here. Uh, the Colossi are tearing for everything, and Puck puts a point on the board. Alrighty, here we are on Expedition Lost. Such a great map name. It implies that a lot of people died exploring this place. Uh, and it does look a little scraggly overall. But down here on the bottom left-hand side of the map, we have the blue Terran player. He is representing Team Root. It is Masa. Woo, yay! And his opponent exploring up in the top right hand corner spawning in the red trunks and still back up against the wall he's one game away from losing but if he wins this one he's gonna put it on at match point and team flip side it is hot and uh going for a single gas again Looks like yeah, no that's that's kind of the one that worked for him, and yeah, I, I definitely not? agree with that on this map too. Mm -hmm. It's I think it's harder to maneuver an oracle really well uh, here. I don't know. That's that's why sense you can't really come in on the uh, left hand side of the map without being really in access of ground. Like there's less open air, is what I'm saying. Uh, to really do it, and the base is just, yeah. the base is so small. They're like yes. super cramped. Yeah, very yeah, often a lot of the oracle kills you get, like you might get a couple in the mineral line, but if you look at a lot of games, the way that they kill things are when something goes out to build a building. Yeah, and uh, with the smaller bases, it's a lot yeah. more difficult to dance around that pack yeah. of six marines and uh, try and pick sure. off those, uh, those SVs that are doing the buildings. And Matter looks like he's going to go pretty economic as well. We're not going to see any repeats of the first game with a ton of Reapers, which is... I know, Expedition Lost... No, I keep on... I, when I first saw it, I thought Expedition Lost was going to be a great map for Reapers because they'd yeah. be able to come in the back way through the rocks without breaking down. But actually, uh, the map maker put in some sort of yeah. gaps so that Reapers Think, can't yeah. use them. Yeah, those so, like extra boulders there, yeah, those don't let you out. So yeah, yeah, it's a it's a strange one here that there is there's that back door into your main. It, it's actually ice on this map. It's not like debris or anything. They call it ice, but it's so close. Like there's no way for anyone. To, like no one's ever gonna sneak in there without you having vision of it. Yeah, but no. it is there. You know. And uh, the reaper's gonna run around. Just I guess. Check there's nothing uh, sneaky going around around the back rocks. I have seen pushes where people break down their own back rocks and then just sneak and out a bunch of way. units yeah. and uh, That's suddenly turn up the opponent's right. natural while they're camping the uh, bottom of the bottom of the natural ramp. But yeah, uh, Master not taking up too hard either. Adding on two barracks yeah. after his uh, CC, it's going to mean he's just going to have a nice, uh, nice fast stim, nice fast combat shields, a lot of bio out, and that's pretty similar. To what he's been doing the other the other few games, I haven't been paying too much attention to exactly what his build order has been. But I feel like most of the other games we've seen faster factories from him, and uh, this game he's playing to what I feel are his strengths a bit more—just a lot of bio and controlling it well, being in lots of different places. Yeah, for sure. Um, still got that Reaper active, but it's not really going to be able to get in anywhere, like you said. Um, He'll probably just try and keep it alive for a bit and eventually dive for some piece of information. Uh, yeah, most likely, but not just yet, I don't think. I think he just... 
he keeps on coming back to this spot by the back rocks. I'm kind of yeah. wondering what he's looking for here, whether he's thinking that uh, this is where Parker's going to take his third base. And if he is, I think he's probably right. So I guess he's just looking at the health on the back rocks to try and figure he's out, oh, I'm not going to get a chance to yeah. look at them anymore. Slides across the ice, that dead figure. Uh, poor guy. But yeah, I guess he was just checking the back rocks to see if Puck had started breaking them down, because if he had, he'd probably be uh, looking to take third. But no third on the way yet, Cass. It would be really early if he was looking for one. And uh, we're, looking, we're seeing what looks like pretty much an identical build to last game. Uh, nice, decently fast robotic facility. A uh, couple of observers out just for scouting, just for detection purposes. Don't want those tricksy widow mines getting into your business. And uh, yeah, just single forwards for now. I imagine the second one will be added on soon enough. Or maybe not, though. I'm not sure if you can get away with second forge on this map. It's a fairly short rush distance, so maybe he'll just stick on the single forge. Yeah, it is a harder one. He's going to get the Twilight Council here. Like you said, it's a lot more cramped, and he may not be able to afford doing that. Um, Mass yeah. is picking up on some signals. He's got double bunker up front. Mm. Um, so being quite defensive there, he's now adding on that starport. But like you said, a bit later in doing this, he'll have stem out a lot quicker, obviously. Uh, he'll finish right around nine minutes. But I don't know that he's going to... Well, he's obviously not moving out to like do anything with it right away. So he's not planning to hit a straight up timing with it. But it is, of course, there defensively. Yeah, well, I mean, he couldn't really get in with his Reaper, yeah. so I think he was just playing a bit cautiously. When he scouted, he did miss a pylon uh, that was that sort of been built by Puck uh, by the destructible rocks, by the ice at the back of, back of his base. Yeah. So it's possible that he scouted around, saw the single gas, saw uh, there were, or missed a pylon in the base, only saw so many pylons and thought, ah, it's mm -hmm. might maybe a proxy robo, I'll build an extra bunker to be safe because he's going to be trying to bust me with immortals. Then it never came, he's uh, salvaged the bunker, no real harm done, and um, he's going to be uh, moving out on the map and trying to uh, put his aggression on. As Stim finishes up. Does he have a concussion shell? No, no, it looks like not yet, but with Stim he should be able to chase this cell down anyway. And Zelda turns around, doesn't get an attack off though, nice. It's kind of funny here, he got those double tech labs, so he's only actually used the one. Huh. He just, he did stim and then he did combat shields, but, um, but he didn't do two at once. <coughs> that's a bit funny. He likes his marauders though. Yeah, so he does. I guess that's why he's done for the, uh, combat, the, yeah, sorry, the double tech lab, rather than actually upgrading from them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he still wanted the units. Yeah. So we've got uh, range coming on the Colossus here now, adding a couple more gateways is Puck. Uh, he now has the two forges out, which are mm. chrono boosting uh, out, so he's going to have the uh, plus two armor on the way with plus one weapons. Ah, we've got Blank. a couple of zealots Almost as well, finished. working yeah. around the back rocks, massive back rocks, so I guess uh, Puck's just trying to open them up for counterattacks later on, but the zealots aren't really going to get anything. I think he would have been better spent just keeping them focused on the rocks if he wanted to do something, because there was no way he was going to kill a unit against everything the mass had there and medevacs. Yeah, and I think <laughs> it kind of tips him off to the fact that there were pylons. He'll see the second one, I mm. think. Yeah. Uh, I think he spotted that, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's you know, yeah. he sends a couple more designs to deal with it. Doesn't need his whole army. So Buck's army there. chasing away uh, the spotter at the third base. Marine does live. I don't I don't get the impression that he intends to take a third base. No, he's he's been a little slow on it generally. He yeah. did uh, he has now and then, but uh, it's always been I guess I'd say cautious. He's never gone for that the, the really greedy Protoss play. Uh, or he has, but in okay, different ways. Like go. he's gone for a double forge, and he's sometimes gone for pretty uh, pretty greedy and other kind of tech routes, but. Uh, we still see the third base coming down, and I think that's kind of a trade-off for the double forge. There's no way you can secure a third base uh, with really, really fast upgrades. We kind of saw what happens if you did in if you tried to do it in Deadwing, uh, yeah. when Puck went for the double forge and then just basically got broken at his third base. His massa continually threw wave after wave of units at him, and Puck's reinforcements, uh, his reinforcement warpings, weren't ever quite enough to drive massa off completely. Just sort of driving him back for now, whilst taking more and more damage on his third base until that fell. And yeah, I think uh, I think a more balanced style 
uh, it's it's really nice out of park in this game. Yeah, for sure. And Mousa has literally just finished his plus one on attack. No, no upgrades to armor yet. Um, although that has just started, but he's just operating off the one engineering bay. Mm. Uh, there are a lot more Vikings out this time around. However, he's got uh, seven, eight of them now already on the map, uh, which is something he he lacked in often in the early game. But there's four Colossus, so. Eight Vikings still not enough to really deal with that in the amount of time you need. Not really. He's gonna have a. But few there's not a lot of anti-air here either. Uh, as I look, there's not like a ton of stalkers. It's just kind of a smattering. Yeah, and uh, Mass is actually going up pretty high in the Vikings. Oh ho ho! It's the SCVs. The boys are being brung. The entire natural base worth of SCVs is coming along with Massa, and uh, the Observe Puck is going to see this. Massa yeah, has how many Vikings now? It. 12 Vikings, uh, 4 more about to finish. 14 is the critical number you need to one-shot a Colossus, so he's going to have that and a couple spare. So he should be able to uh, one-shot volley down two of these Colossi before yeah, his Puck Viking is going to completely sack this face. Yeah, he's not going to make any attempt. It, once the boys come, you kind of know. You just, just don't absolutely lose, and you're fine. Yeah. Uh, Mass hasn't gone completely all in. There's only one yeah. base of SCVs, but uh, the Vikings are going to get on top of these Colossi. One of them falls immediately. Yet. Two more are going to go down very, very quickly before they really do any damage. And the last one is going to fall, and with no more AoE, it's going to be tough for Puck to hold this. The Archons add a little bit to the mix, but against the Marauders, they really don't do anything. And Mass has still got yeah, a Mass solid... Mass looks like he's holding this. Okay. He's even got things fighting on both sides. Uh, yeah, there comes another big group from oh, the second yeah. side. Uh, it's not good for Master that all his reinforcements are being picked off, uh, but he's still got a pretty solid main army. Uh, although Puck has a lot of energy on these sentries, a uh, couple Archons and reinforcement Zealots. Looks like he's going to push this back. Yeah, he will will fall back here, and this is one of those rare occasions where I think Massa actually did do enough damage to pull the boys and still go home. Yeah, he doesn't. Think, he doesn't right. have to actually win the game right now. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe if he'd brought like, his mains worth of workers as well, he could have won the game. Yeah. But he just brought one base worth of workers. The mules, especially on three base, are going to be able to make up the income inequality and then some, as we actually see Massa ahead in income, at least in uh, minerals right now. Uh, but Puck is, of course, just on to be reduced down to two bases. He's going to rebuild his nexus at his third. And he'll be able to saturate that pretty much immediately. And he didn't lose too many workers. So what he really lost during that attack was the mining time at his third and, of course, the cost of the Nexus. Uh, plus, you know, trading off army a bit, but nothing too terrible. And it looks like Master's preparing for a big old drop here. Three medevacs full of largely marauders. They're going to do terrible, terrible damage to Puck's production and tech. Yeah, he does uh, see although... it with that observer. Really good observer yeah. spread throughout this whole series, by the way, by mm. Puck. And... Uh... There comes the drop in the bottom. Uh, I think, yeah, he's immediately going to see that he can't get enough done. Can't get out of here. Yeah. But uh, going after the third base again is the other part of the force. But Puck bringing back just what he needed. And uh, he's not, he's going to save, I think, this third base here again. Yeah. A nice, nice immortal in with all this too, which is going to be really obnoxious. But uh, drop back in the main. Again, yeah, he's again, gonna lose dealt. pretty much all of this. Yeah, dealt with by Puck with very, very few problems. And oh, it's gonna pick off all of those units. And Massa's army supply is looking pretty poor right now. He uh, he spent a, he had a lot of units out on the map in various different locations, and that's the real strength of Terra That's what's terrifying. It's not just oh suddenly units in my base. It's oh suddenly yeah. units in my base, and then as you move to defend them, there's oh suddenly units yeah. in my third. And that's uh, that's exactly what Massa managed to pull off right there. But Puck split his army so expertly and defended it with really very little damage at all. Yeah. He lost a Colossus, which isn't great, but I, oh my god, Puck is bringing the boys? Yeah, Puck's Puck bringing the boys. Yeah, the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Oh he's, no, he's, oh, he's, no he's bringing it back now, okay, yeah. I mean, I think this is a good decision by Puck, but I'm kind of disappointed. Yeah. Um, so now, yeah, so much supplies in these Vikings, they're useless now. Yeah. yeah. yeah seeing that. Puck does take that one, Massa realized he, he committed, um, committed there with his voice.
Alright everybody, welcome back to the final match. It's going to be on Overgrowth and it's going to be between these two wonderful players right here. First of which is our red Protoss up in the top right hand corner. Representing Flipside Gaming. It is Puck! Uh, woo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Puck, puck, puck. And down here, being introduced in a monotone voice, is our blue Terran player. From Team Root, the only person I know who can drink a Red Bull and then pass out consistently. It is <laughs> Massa. That's his he biggest does, claim to fame. Okay. He does do that. every. He, for some reason, Red Bulls make him tired, and he goes to sleep. That's not right. I know. it doesn't. <laughs> no, nothing about him is right. <laughs> but but it's happened multiple times. Oh well. <clears throat> uh, interesting facts behind the scenes. He's actually got two workers in gas. Now don't take it down to one. This yeah. looks interesting. It looks specific. It looks like there's a plan. Yeah, it's got to be something for this. He goes for the reactor right after. <coughs> he is putting down the CC on the low ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, I think we're he just needs. Gonna see... Yeah, what? I think we're just going to see a couple extra barracks following this up because yeah, I mean he, he's not going to have gas or anything else, right? Right. I mean, see like a three CC build. But I haven't seen that against Protoss. Oh, yeah, uh, so just there's, the there's a barracks. Here's a rack. I was kind of hoping maybe he would switch to. He'd have just enough for a factory and like a mass hellion or something <laughs> ridiculous, but no. <clears throat> that would be pretty crazy. Uh, no, all pretty normal. And uh, Puck again opened with uh, the style of the Serpent so well in the last two games, uh, that single gas style. And getting his next guess now. And I don't know, the Reaper's doing some damage that. Uh, uh, he's got a little too close, so he's, he's gonna die. Uh, pew. Yeah. Yep. He falls. He got a bit too oh. greedy. He had to get that shield damage on the Nexus, but oh. in the end, it killed him. Trouble. Trouble. Yeah. So that will make him a little blinder for a little longer. Um, he does there have, is that oh, one. No, gonna yeah. There's an SCV that uh, Mass hit. He was trying right? to hide. Yeah. Yeah. He so might still get around, around to see this robotics though, which. Uh, yeah, that's not. Nice. I guess that shouldn't surprise him, but at least it's confirmation. Uh, yeah. That it's not Stargate, anything like that. This is uh this is actually I think this is the first game where Mass has actually scouted the robotics facility. Yeah. Uh, out of like the previous. Oh, wow. He actually loaded it in. That's something I see. Yeah, pretty nice cool. Nice save. Nice save. Yeah, Stalker will get away after doing a little bit of damage, but he's going to see a reasonable number of Marines here and uh, have some mm -hmm. idea that uh, things are up. Now, Concussive Shell is the first thing being researched. So this is indeed a pretty precise timing. Uh-huh. Um... That yeah. he's going to be hitting here. It's going to be cool. Obviously, uh, the shell. photon overcharge will exist. Yeah, but uh, it's photon overcharge isn't just a completely insurmountable yeah. defense, especially with marauders on the field, because they can. I mean, they can burst down Nexus, but probably not uh, efficiently in this uh, sort of early game number. But really, it's uh, I think with the concussive shell and a couple of marauders mixed in, he's just going to look to use that power, that slowing. Uh, anti micro ability, I guess, to pick off units as he darts in and out and in and out and takes one or two shots on the Photon That's Overcharge, but each dark. time whittles down uh, the, yeah, the unit counterpart. And then eventually, just uh, just there's no more Photon Overcharge left and he runs in and wins the game. Well, that's the plan, I think. But the question is, will it work out? Yeah, he takes the path that's around it. here, and there's, there's very few units actually out. Um, one thing that could help would be building like an immortal, but he's not. Uh, nothing's underway there. Does come in here now. Takes up one stalker. Goes for a second, and I think he may get out. Oh, he's just going right up into the main. So this is yeah, quite the commitment. There's another folk nova charge waiting for him in the main. Uh, in, in 13 seconds. Oh my god, no, there isn't. In 13 seconds there will be, but not just yet. And he will do a lot of damage here. But his fire is being spread around a lot. He's not doing enough. Yeah, there's quite a few. There were quite a few stalkers up there in the main, and yeah. uh, Puck actually focus fired down the Marauders really, really well. I feel like they were the backbone of this push with the concussive shell, shell invested into them, and facing against Puck's incredibly stalker-heavy composition. Those Marauders were what he needed to make that push work, and without them, 
it didn't, really. Yeah, so, uh, it's. I'm, I'm not sure where things even sit right now. He's he's still just got five stalkers. He does have another photon overcharge available, and yeah, Mass is going to take a third base here out front. Um, in every one of these games so far, there's been an observer. Oh, he does actually kill this one. I was going to say, in every one of the games so far, there's been an observer just at his front door every time the entire game. <laughs> and he finally just killed it. Um, but yet again, another observer is going to kind of path on in. We'll see if it discovers the third base going down. Yeah. Not that Puck has any offensive potential right now anyway, but no, uh, right. it could come up later. Yeah, it's a possibility, and uh, actually he's going to pick off that probe and uh, stop. No, he's not going to be able to stop the power, not with the one Marine, but he's going to just hide it around by a third base, see if uh, he can scout that game out. Puck is too clever for that, though. That's exactly where that Marine's going to be hiding and Takes it out with precision. Uh, <coughs> pardon me, we also see the second forge on the way again. Puck does like his uh, his double forge play. It's, it's cool to see. And here, once again, Observer just poking in the front, sees this pickup, knows exactly that a drop is moving out, and he's already moving to respond to it. Um, he'll have a photon overcharge available. He's got stalkers available. He's, he's just kind of all over it. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's doing pretty nicely here. Uh, he's even got an... Uh, what is that? Is that just a probe? A I can't probe out here, yeah, to try and Yeah, spot probe out here, ready to spot yeah, for the Yeah, he's going to see it. And Bam! Oh, so clutch. There by Puck. And did he actually see it? Because he's not moving to react. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if he saw that or not. It, he looked ah. like he was in range, but of course the the medevacs obviously have better vision than the probes do. Yeah. Massa scans ahead and uh, decides not to go just yet because he sees that army there waiting for him. He's also got another two medevacs heading out the left-hand side. He won't um, be able to guard both either way. Yeah. Uh, so he's yeah, no, going to have to cancel not. the third. Not this third, man. Yeah, this third is not going to finish. Uh, or if it... I oh, know, there's no way. Cancel it immediately. Lose the pro for it as well. But now that, he um, moves his, yeah, now that he moves his army over towards that third base location so he can try and take it again, uh, this opens up the main to... Uh, to those two medevacs which we've been waiting for. And Mass now, scans. Because, it was, because it was two medevacs, does he think it was the two medevacs he saw? Because he moved oh, really fast. Well. I mean, I think he has to assume yeah. it wasn't now. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, now. Both going to go down, but there's still, there's a lot of bio here. And with Stim, they can run in and stuff There's like one down. Colossus here, acting on its own. Oh, he okay. does pick up. I think he could have bum-rushed that one. And, uh, mm, and had it been maybe. But, I, I don't think I mean, he would have lost some forces, but... So. Yeah, he only had two marauders in that, and the uh, yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Marines would have died very quick with that Colossus, so I don't know. Oh, oh he is I can see engaging it over move. here, though. A little bit there. Yeah. Uh, not by very many units, so he's just going to approach his way through it. And, yeah, this uh, this base is kind of pulling back. Uh, he does have to cancel some things, and it looks like he's going to try and pick this up. doesn't want to engage just yet. Yeah, no, I think he's going to actually get that CC, which is pretty big. Uh, but Vikings yeah. out for Massa. I mean, I know Massa's Massa's still looking in okay shape. Like he's lost the third CC, sure, but Puck is only just finishing up his third Nexus. So yeah. that third that third command center was a really big advantage for Massa, and having it taken away doesn't doesn't knock him. I mean, it knocks him back, but it doesn't like knock him out. Uh, it's just a bit annoying. He's not going to be too far behind Puck though. Yeah, the development of the composition here is interesting this time there's actually so many stalkers like ordinarily if that had come in and there's two colossus and you got six vikings you're probably fine there are so many stalkers they would have just died immediately and the colossus probably yeah. would still be alive but as this develops further because he's so marauder heavy and he's bringing all this stuff with them <laughs> the boys yet again it's going to chew through these stalkers this is basically mm -hmm. going to determine it right here yeah, I think this is a really good choice because losing that third base, he's lost all the SCVs that uh, or he's lost anything he can do with these do SCVs, with yeah. uh, at least in terms of mining it. Uh, Puck's going to sacrifice the third base again. I think this is really good. He can't quite hold it just yet, but if he can wait a bit for a bit, if he can pick off some Vikings, uh, he might be able to do a little better. Zealot Charge is very, very close to finishing. 
but yeah. I don't think Puck's going to get a chance to wait for it. Uh, the Stalkers are unfortunately not really focused flying down the Vikings, so the Vikings are going to take out all the Colossi. They're all trapped in the back end for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, okay, yeah. Master retreats. Puck survives with a couple of Colossi. Um, but this game, rather than like last game where uh, Massa took out the third base and it was sort of even, or was it last game? On oh, expedition last. Uh, yeah. This game, Massa has lost a lot more SCVs doing that. He had more to spare to begin with, but he hasn't built it, rebuilt his third behind this. Puck can start his third up again. He's got uh, 61 workers. So as soon as this third base finishes, he can transfer over and saturate it fully. And Massa. He hasn't even started a third base. He's gonna to have to go all in it, again. It, it, oh, it no, is in there. In there. It is in there. But oh, it's the, in the yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the interesting things too is their mains are though almost mined out. So if they're both running on two bases, forty SCDs will be almost equivalent to the sixty um, sixty probes. Yeah. But there was a window there. When he when he killed the third uncontested, I kinda of wanted to see him just send the SCDs home and mm. fake the rest of the attack. So, or you could still do the same damage he did to the Colossus without losing them. Um, yeah. Coming in here now. And the Zealot's running everything down. He will have to come back into place. Uh, not enough of the Colossus dying here. No, all the Vikings gone and only for one Colossus. Uh, especially given that Puck has the double upgrades on those Colossus. They're on... <laughs> Pardon me, they're a nice advantage versus the uh, bio on the ground. And Puck has so many zealots to tank for them as well. This third base is going to go down again. Uh, Mass is going to try and save it. He might actually keep it alive. But, I mean, his army is going to go down so quickly. All the SCVs get torn apart by these Colossi. One of them's on 13 kills, the other one's only on 7 and stuff. The uh, one of the Colossus, ah, it does get saved just by Puck. Really nice focus fire on the Vikings. Uh, but all the time, Mass is. Bio army is dwindling and dwindling and dwindling. But he's whipping down the Zerts. Uh, another round of Warpins, though. Might this be will enough. be the last little engagement here. He's only got 23 SUVs left. Cannot rebuild this. Running out of healing. Puck does take this. After going down 2 0 at the beginning of the series, Puck comes back three games in a row and takes this off of Massa.